This week's episode of A Word to Live By is brought to you by Bethel Ruach Productions and is presented by Metabel Okulaja. Please listen and be blessed. Hello friends, welcome to this week's episode of A Word to Live By. My name is Metabel. Greetings from everyone here at Bethel Ruach Productions. We are all well and enjoying the summer. I hope you are doing the same. Uh, This week's Word to Live By is born out of things that the Lord has been teaching me. And this has dated back to, or this dates back to almost three years now. God has been teaching me a lot about faith, about walking in the light of what I believe, and how to walk out my faith in this world. There are some things that I have learned that I could not and did not learn from a church, a classroom, or anywhere else. I learned them from the Holy Spirit himself and from the Word of God, but I believe that the things that I learned are not just for myself. I believe that God would have me share these things so that we can all profit, as I would expect that if the Lord teaches you something, you would feel free to share it with me. And so... Uh, Please come along with me on this little journey as I explain some of the things that the Lord has taught me. Some of the things you will know, or some of you will know, and some of these things will be new to some of us. And whether it's new to you or it's something that you know, if it is, let it be a refresher course. If it is not, please sit back, enjoy, and be blessed. The title of this week's episode is Mark of Shame or emblem of faith, mark of shame, or emblem of faith. Last week, we talked about they that wait upon the Lord, renewing their strength. And we talked about the fact that the only place where we can renew our strength is in the presence of the Lord. And there we get quickened, and there we receive the strength to move on when we are tired and when we are weary. We see the same scenario playing out in the lives of Two people, Abraham and Sarah. I've been in the book of Genesis a lot over the past year and over the, over the past one to two years, actually. And I just love the book of Genesis because that's kind of like where it all began. It's not the oldest book in the Bible, as I've been told. But for me, it's a chronicle of how it all began. And the beautiful thing about it is, in the beginning, we see the foreshadowing of the end. How great our God is and how awesome is he. Now, this story is going to, or today's episode is going to feature, or concentrate mainly on Sarah. Now, Sarah was not originally named Sarah. Her name was originally Sarai. And Sarai means quarrelsome a very tough woman, a woman who had been through all sorts of things. This woman was married to Abram. And this Abram was also a man who had gone through many things. Both of them were childless in their old age. But at one point in time, God came into their lives. God spoke to Abram and called him out of his Um, hometown, renamed him, gave him a new blueprint for life. And he also did the same for his wife, Sarai. Sarai, quarrelsome woman, became Sarah, princess or princess of the multitude, as we will read a little bit later. Now, let's picture this scene. These are an older couple. One is a proud nobleman. The other is a quarrelsome woman. That does not make for a very peaceful relationship, I'm sure we know. But God, as I said, came into their relationship, came into their lives, and he renamed Abram, Abraham, meaning father of many nations. And he renamed Sarai, Sarah, meaning princess of the multitude. (laughs) What a turnaround. Now, I don't want us all, I don't want us to look at these people in a vacuum. I want us to visualize the kind of lives they must have led, that they were a part of a community who knew them as the proud and noble one and the quarrelsome one. And all of a sudden, they start calling themselves father of many nations and princess of the multitude. 
And all this while there was no tangible evidence of that which they were calling themselves. I wonder if <laughs> any of us would be um, kind or um, just catch on this line of vision with them. I wonder if any one of us would have done that. I know that I probably wouldn't. I'd have looked at them and I, I would have like been like, um, well, there's something going on here. I'm not really sure what it is, but <laughs> there is something going on here. And in those days, you know, they had a community of people. And so when Abraham would call his wife, he no longer called her, hey, come here, you quarrelsome woman. He would say, princess, princess of the multitude princess, I'm calling you. And then we would hear the princess of the multitude say, father of nations, I'm on my way. I'm on my way, father of nations. I'll be right there. How many of us know that there would have been many snickers behind their backs? How many of us know that there would have been laughter behind their backs? How many of us know that people would have made fun of them ad nauseum? And said, look at these people, they're going crazy and senile in their old age. They don't even know what to do anymore. They're now making up a whole dynasty of which we do not see any evidence. But these people knew what God had spoken to their hearts. And they chose to bear their emblem. Now for them, it was an emblem of faith. An emblem of the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But to the people around them, it was an emblem of shame. An emblem of shame in the sense that these people were calling themselves who they were not. In this day and age, we would call them impersonators. We might even call them con people. Some people might even be saying, oh, they want to do that just for ulterior motives. Whatever it was. We know that in their old age, they did not have any evidence of fruitfulness, and yet they addressed themselves as people who had abundance of fruitfulness. To one, it was an emblem of faith. To another, it was a mark of shame. Look at them. They don't have anything. They don't have anything to speak of of substance, and yet they, they carry on as if they've got this whole dynasty. Now, how does that affect us? How does that affect you? How does that affect me? I just wrote a little article about it. Uh, I updated my status, actually, with something like this a few days ago. And if you have time, you might want to take a look at it and read it. It's very interesting. Now, how it applies to us is that in our lives, God may have shown us certain things. God may have revealed certain things to us. Like, for example, he may have told me that I will write 25 books in my lifetime. Well, that's a really conservative number. I'm hoping for a lot more than that. <laughs> but he may have told me that I will write 25 novels or 25 books. And I go around saying, I am the author of 25 books. Now, people are going to say, well, where are the books? And in this instance, I may not have anything tangible to display, but if it is my shield or, or if it, my, it is my emblem of faith, it is mine to declare and it is up to God to fulfill what I have said. Now, for the people who hear me, it might be a, mar a, a mark of shame in that they may laugh at me. They may think I'm senile. They may think I don't know what I'm doing. They may actually think that I am conniving in some ways. But hallelujah, because the proof in wearing the emblem of shame is in this one thing. God said in his word, they that put their trust in the Lord, they shall not be ashamed. They that put their trust in the Lord, they shall not be ashamed, neither shall they be confounded, world without end. World without end. And in the book of Hebrews, the Lord said, knowing this, that never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Which in my language means, never will I leave you and never will I uh, forsake you or, or, or leave you stranded without any, um, without any recourse. Never will I let you stand alone and bear shame. I will stand up and I will show up for you. So, um, in the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 15, let's add scripture to this. And God said unto Abraham, 
As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Now, there are some important things that come out of this. First of all, they were not the ones that came up with the idea all by themselves. So it's not a question of just making up stuff in your head or thinking yourself grand or thinking yourself in a way that you ought not to. Like David said, I have not exercised myself in, uh, myself in things that are too wonderful for me. That is not the case. What we're talking about here is God specifically speaking to a heart saying, this is what I want you to do. And that heart taking a hold of that word and declaring it as if it were, as if it was. That is faith. Saying, God, I am taking you at your word, no matter what anybody says, no matter what I see, no matter if they laugh at me, no matter if they scoff at me, I will hold this up as my emblem of faith, even though it may be a mark of shame for me as I walk in my daily life. Now, what does that, what did that um, bring about in the lives of Abraham and Sarah? We read in Genesis 21 verse 3, it says, And Abraham called the name of his son, his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac, called his name Isaac. Now Isaac means laughter. To them, it was the substance of their things hoped for, finally manifested. To the others, it was a refuting of the mark of shame that they had put on this couple. And as Abraham and Sarah gave birth to Isaac, Isaac served as a perpetual reminder to them that this was what God had spoken to Abraham and Sarah and to the people who laughed at them <laughs> it served as a validation of what Abraham and Sarah had said. So to one, this child that was named Isaac was now fulfilling the opposite of what the people had thought. He remained a mark, uh, uh, an emblem, excuse me, of faith for his parents. And he was now a mark of shame for the people who scoffed at Abraham and Sarah. Now, what the Lord said to me is that I will say things, he said something to me, he said, I will say things to you that will make people laugh at you. But don't worry, the same people who laugh at you will laugh with you when I have fulfilled that which I have spoken. So what is it that you're looking to God for that looks so stupendous, so miraculous, so out of reach, and people are laughing at you because you are verbalizing these desires? Don't worry. The same people that laughed at you will laugh with you in the name of Jesus. I will close with the story of Walt Disney. This was a young man that had a dream when he was young. A dream that consisted of a place where people were always happy. A dream of a place that he created in his mind. And people laughed at him for it. But let's look at it today. Walt Disney, Walt Disney World has become one of the greatest places where fantasies of children are played out. It started out in the mind of this little boy, but it grew into something tangible that we can all see today. A mark of shame for those who laughed at him and an emblem of faith for this man who dared to see more. So this week, dare to see more. Dare to hear more from the Lord. Dare to open up your heart to more. And when you hear, boldly declare what the Lord has said to you in any manner that he tells you to declare it. Not just on your own arbitrarily, but in any manner that he tells you to declare it. And though it be a mark of shame as you walk along that road and people laugh at you, hold up your emblem of faith. Because you know what? One day, your Isaac will show up. 
and the people who laughed at you will in Jesus' name laugh with you. Let us take these words with us this week. Let's hold them fast because faithful is he who has promised who will also do it. And also because he said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And also because he said, I will hasten my word to perform it. Let us hold on. Remember, hold up your emblem of faith because the people who laughed at you will laugh with you. In Jesus' name, have a wonderful week and the Lord bless you. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode. Please join us again next week for another episode of A Word to Live By. Be blessed and have a wonderful week.